Namaste everyone and welcome to another session on Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Today we will research chapter 3 verse 42 and 43. They say that the functioning of the senses is superior to the senses. The functioning of cognition is superior to cognition. The functioning of the intellect is superior to the intellect. But superior to all is that. Thus, use intelligence over the intellectual process. Restrain the self by the self. Overcome this enemy which comes in the form of desire. What is Sri Krishna trying to say? They say that the functioning of the senses is superior to the senses. The functioning of cognition is superior to cognition. The functioning of the intellect is superior to the intellect. But superior to all this is that. Thus, use intelligence over the intellectual process. Restrain the self and bind the self. Overcome this enemy which comes in the form of desire. It's, it's a very straightforward kind of uh, message that Sri Krishna is giving. Let's say, let's, let's understand this a little more. Functioning of the senses is superior to the senses. What this means is that the senses are a static organ, uh, uh, a static is a static piece of equipment. How they work is what is more important. In the sense, suppose uh, you are trying to assess the weather. If you have a radar. Having a radar by itself is, has no value. But when the radar is used in a manner to assess the various uh, uh, movement of clouds and this and that, the various temperature, humidity and other equipment is used to understand the data and then that is collated. Then that information is got more value than having a radar and having a telemetry device and things like that. The key, so, so what he is trying to say is that the equipment has really no value. More value is the way it is used. So the senses are superior, the functioning of the senses are superior to the senses. So the way it is functioned, the way it is used is more important than the equipment itself. The functioning of the cognition is superior to the cognition. That is, if you are having software to drive it, if you, are, if you have software to drive this computer, how you use this software is more important than the software itself. Our cognition is basically understanding how we understand anything. How we understand is more important than the process of understanding itself. The functioning of the intellect is superior to the intellect itself. The cleanliness so if if your buddhi is vakra, if it goes left handed, if you're a psychopath or a sociopath or a or whatever narcissist, the way you will assess information will be very different from other people. So, the way the, the intellect functions is more important than the intellect itself. And superior to all is that, because that, the Brahman, is the one that drives it. So, what, uh, this, is, this is the most important part. Just having intelligence, having a good body and things like that is of no value if you cannot put it to the correct form of use. Thus, use intelligence over the intellectual process. Restrain the self by the self, overcome this enemy which comes in the form of desire. So what he is trying to say here is that if you are going to, if, if you wish to transcend artha, kama and dharma and reach moksha, the first thing that you need to do is to bring down the number of frequencies and the number of variables which you have to fight. So what happens is that because we are continuously being 
targeted by so much information if you reduce the number of variables which distract you or disturb you then you are in a better position to find a solution for example if you have a tv in the house and you are addicted to watching one of those tele serials the tele serial itself is of no value because it is not based on reality it is based on a story and that story unfortunately when you see it becomes a reality for you it disturbs you so you have added a variable which you don't need to so the point is that if you can reduce the number of variables that are not adding value to you then what happens so you will get out of whatsapp groups you get out of uh, various uh, non value adding uh, tvs throw away the tv then you don't uh, you you begin to reduce the kind of diet you have you control the diet you have you control portion size you control the time at which you eat and then slowly you begin to reduce the variables that impact you and make you uh, and and enable you to reach the source which is the brahman then that is what he is saying he is saying use intelligence over intellectual process so it is very easy for us to intellectualize anything what we always do is we begin to then if you will see most uh, let's let's take an example of cricket we are since we are in india you will notice many people will watch uh, the game that is happening and then say are that fellow should have hit it on this side or that side he should have played the ball back like this that is a intellectual process it does not add value only one person knows how the ball came and how it had to be hit and that is the batsman but what happens you sit in front of the tv and you are commenting on the game where you have absolutely no equity so what you are doing is you are intellectualizing a game when with somebody else is playing so the what that is what he is saying he is saying get rid of all these things where you are not involved with yourself and then when you are involved in yourself then make sure that you are not getting deeply trapped by the variables that come to you because then what you are doing you are removing things that are not adding value to you you are building a reservoir within yourself which enables you to absorb the shock of change because change is continuous there is only one person who is handling those things and that is you when you handle the change in a manner when you have given yourself so much of backup when you got the reservoir within yourself and you are able to so what happens is that the number of stimuli reduce if you do not expose yourself to that many sources of stimuli when you reduce the number of sources of stimuli then what happens is the stimuli that comes to you is the stimuli that number one you are in a position to handle you think you can handle and thereafter it does not cause turbulence within yourself when the stimuli does not cause turbulence within yourself what happens is that you are more or less continuously in a state of peace you are not getting attracted and you are not rejecting anything so the desire quotient the amount that you begin to realize you want to grab something it reduces this is what he is trying to say thus using intelligence over intellectual process to restrain the self by the self so i want this i want a shirt i want a pant this way you go to a hotel the hotel will have multitude of uh, offerings to you suppose you so you could easily eat easily eat something that is fried food you could easily eat something that has got lot of fat you could eat something that is great for the health or you could say no i want to eat something that is simple 
the choice is there with you. So restrain the self by the self. Choose something that will not have a negative effect on your body. So when you choose the self, the, when you restrain the self by the self, what happens? You get into a practice of saying enough. So when you get into a practice of saying, I am not going to do something that increases the chances with which I increase the variables that I have to manage, then the internal capacity for change, for absorption of change increases. When the internal capacity for absorption of change increases, then automatically you do not get disturbed by change. You are able to absorb change better. And that is what he is saying. That use the intelligence over intellectual process. So don't get trapped by Sachin Tendulkar hitting a six. It's not, it's Sachin Tendulkar six. It is not yours. Don't get trapped by India winning a match. It is India's match. It is not yours. Though you are part of India, it is nice to be happy. But it is it doesn't make sense for you to be exuberant and go out of control and things like that. Restrain the self by the self. As I've said, an example I've given is a hotel where you can choose something that is simple over something that is exotic. Overcome, then when you continuously do this, overcome this enemy which comes in the form of desire. So the whole game of uh, Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna, throughout the uh, Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna is basically teaching common sense. Common sense in the, in, is that you do what it takes to live a sensible life. The minute you go beyond what you can do, your frame of reference, your zone of comfort, I, this is absolutely required. Sometimes you have to go out of the zone of comfort. But that zone of comfort when you, which, you, which you go out of must be something that you cannot stop. After all, the Mahabharata war was not a choice. It, it was, it, it, they had to do it in order to get what they wanted. So we also get into situations where we cannot avoid a confrontation. But to simply go and seek a confrontation, that's stupid. So what Sri Krishna says is, reduce dependence on external stimuli to feel uh, that you are living a good life. Live a sensible life. Use common sense in all situations. Try to reduce the exposure you have to non-value adding activities. And try very hard to remain anchored within yourself and be at peace. This is fundamentally what he is trying to say in these, in these two verses. Let us recap what we have learnt so far. The way the senses function is superior to the senses. So what happens when we get stimuli? There is a sentience interface through our senses which results in an experience and that experience contributes and comes from our sense of why or motivation and where we come from. All of this is dependent on our sense of awareness, our ability to be aware in the present. And this awareness of the present determines the movement of our consciousness. And the consciousness transmits the sentience as well as experience to our sense of identity. There are two basic awarenesses, our awareness of our environment around us and our awareness of our own existence. So this awareness of the environment is called Vidnana and the awareness of ourselves is called Jnana. This awareness or the sentience interface comes in the form of sense organs which give that inf information to our manas where they are collated along 
with the memory. This is then compared by our buddhi for congruence with our dharma. Dharma or our natural state or conditioning or value system determines our natural behavior. And this natural behavior comes from our sense of existence or sense of self-worth which is called asmita. From asmita comes our sense of doership that I am the doer. And this finally results in the action itself. Now, this whole all these all these organs, whether they are sense organs or it is the cognitive organ or the or where the intellect is, is all determined, is all static. But the way it operates is more important than the organ itself. For example, if we have eyes. The way we see, what we see, is more important than the eyes itself. If you were to take an inanimate object, the car, the car itself is of no value. How it is driven is what is important. A process in any organization has no value. What is important is the operations, whether the process is actually being completed in the way it should be. That is why Sri Krishna says the way the sense functions is more important than the sense itself. So how do we restrain the self? We cannot control the situation that we are in, nor can we control the stimulus that we get. And our response is often determined by our own conditioning. So even the response is not completely within our control. So we, how do we control our response? It we have to practice. It is a learned a method in which we control our response. So first we have to increase our ability to discriminate relevant information from the irrelevant information. What is real from what is unreal? What is permanent? vis-a-vis -vis what is impermanent. Then we must develop the ability to disengage ourselves from the outcome or even the process. So we must perform all our actions in a manner where we do not get personally attached to the outcome or the activity itself. And lastly, we have to develop the sense where our own internal conditioning does not become an impediment to our ability to act in the right way. So this is done. Yoga is the way in which we can increase the situational awareness. This allows us to be more aware of ourselves in any situation and manage change with minimum agitation. So what is it that we need to do? We need to figure out what we want to do with our lives. So first are the life goals. What are we expecting to gain or do in this particular life goal? And that would depend obviously on our age, our securities and how insecure we are or secure we are. And those various things will are the causation, the, the motivation which drive how our life goals will be kept. Then what happens? We have to pace it. There's no point in trying to make do everything within a year will burn out. Exercises are a very important component which we must include in our lifestyle because throughout the day we are receiving stimulus which keeps exciting our amygdala and thereafter the adrenaline glands. So there is a there is lot of stimulant in our body and this stimulant, the adrenaline needs to be burnt out and that best way of burning it out is through exercise. A diet is absolutely vital for ensuring good health. We all know that when we don't get a night's sleep, a proper night's sleep, we are not at our best the next day. The family is our first line stress, in, stress, in line stress uh, shock absorber. When we have a secure home, when the security itself gives us the ability to recoup from the stresses of the day. So we need to 
nourish it we need to maintain it and we need to make sure that the family is integrated hobbies whenever we go to work we are in a particular mode when we have a hobby what happens is that there is a change in mode which allows us to refresh which refreshes us and allows us to go back to the drudgery of normal living in a with with fresh vigor so how do we maximize value with the time we have first of obviously is to prioritize our tasks do what is important first and what is not important you keep it down further in our priority list then the most important thing is make a plan and work the plan just making a plan is not enough just as sri krishna says the sense itself has no value operating the sense is more important so make the plan but operations of the plan is very very important it is more important than the plan itself be steadfast in your effort don't be crestfallen at setbacks because there will be setbacks so we need to be patient steadfast and devoted to our task and work with a with a mindset of sacrifice not really trying to um become too attached to the outcome how do we avoid loss first of all is addiction any form of addiction whether it is substance or alcohol cigarettes or even junk food or even a habit some people might be you know addicted to playing uh, video games that itself is an addiction and that is something that we need to manage second is the tv it's for not for nothing that the tv has been called an idiot box because it makes us new idiots we sit in front of a tv and we watch it and we get away and that leaves images in ourselves much after the program has been completed and if we watch something that is that excites our emotions that will affect us for a long time and degrade us in our ability to live a fulfilled life social media obviously the more we get out of the various whatsapp groups that are not adding value the various facebooks and the other social media platforms that gives us extra time to recharge ourselves and live a life that is more fulfilled thank you do like share and subscribe for more information please do visit my website www.schoolofyoga.in